All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to PeakLoudy's webinar on Unlock Autonomous Testing with Agentic AI, qpilot.ai. My name is Dinakar, and I'll be the host for today. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few housekeeping rules. You may have noticed that your line is currently muted. However, you can submit your questions during the webinar using the Q&A option available. We will answer your questions as part of the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. Also, do note that this webinar is being recorded and we will send out the link of the recording to watch again or share with your colleagues later. With that said, uh, let me introduce the speaker for today. He needs no introduction, Avinash Tiwari. Avinash is a renowned thought leader, a recognized keynote speaker, and the co-founder of PCloudy. He has around 20 plus years of experience in product development and testing, and he brings with him a passion for emerging technology and quick adoption, both of which, which have solidified his reputation as a thought leader in the app testing space. So without further ado, let me hand it to our speaker, Avinash Tiwari. Thanks, Dinagar. Thanks for the introduction. And uh, a warm welcome to all of you again uh, on uh, behalf of myself and my colleague, uh, Shweb. Uh, we are very, very excited to be here and uh, present to you what we have created uh, uh, as, as qpilot.ai. Um, so over the next 45 minutes, myself and Shweb will be taking you through a ride of a kind. So please fasten your seat belts and uh, uh, we are ready to take, take off. Um, so initially I'll talk about what this beast is all about. And then uh, Shweb will take it over and, and start showing you how it works. Uh, so the beast in action. Um, that's the approach we have. So please uh, be settled and, and we are all set to go. Before I jump in, uh, I want to take a step back and talk about the buzz around AI, Gen AI, or agentic AI. So a few years back, uh, I think we were all talking about transformation of organizations to become a digital first tech company. And we saw companies like Uber, Tesla emerging in this world uh, so do we know Uber as a taxi company? I guess we all know Uber as an app company. Same with Tesla. Do we know it as a car company? We all know it as a tech powerhouse uh, company. And similarly, we saw in different industries, banks becoming tech first companies. And that uh, gave rise to the evolution of developer and test tools. Uh, because with so much tech inside every organization, uh, you can't do anything without right set of developer and test tools. And we'll talk about that as we go further. I was recently uh, hearing a talk from Satya Nadella, and he talked about the current situation, what, what we are talking about today. Every company has to become an AI company. And we are already seeing that in action. And testing has to follow the trend like we followed the trend when the companies became the digital first uh, tech company. So with that as, as background, uh, we have seen the evolution of testing. And some of you who are old enough, uh, probably like me, <laughs> have seen this journey and you can relate to what was happening in the early uh, 80s, 90s, um, uh, or 2000. Uh, testing was typically end of the life cycle phenomena, uh, waterfall methods, uh, some cases it was not uh, given important uh, due itself. But we saw that transition, though initially the transition was a bit slow uh, to, to more automation, um, uh, agile approaches. But things started changing in last decade when DevOps and continuous testing became the trend because every organization started moving uh, to a tech digital first approach. So that cannot happen without DevOps and continuous testing or CICT approach. And that has kind of, uh, uh, that helped everyone in the testing industry. So if you are a QA person, 
I think you required much more skill set. You got to learn different skill set. QA became very important in this phase. And that helped companies like us, product companies who are building test tools, dev tools. Um, because in a continuous testing, CICD kind of environment, you can't do anything without a tool like vCloud. But we are moving next step uh, further into the future where testing is more, testing is going to be more intelligent, autonomous, and more collaborative. And uh, the glimpse of it is what you will see today. So with that uh, being said, I'm sure you must have a lot of questions, right? You will have a lot of doubts, what AI can do, right? And a big question in everyone's mind is, can AI really uh, uh, take over testing, right? Like any other field, uh, can AI replace testing? Can I replace humans in the testing world, et cetera? And I found this slide capturing uh, uh, the answer very well. Um, so if you look at the two sides of the slide, there are some low agency tasks and there are some high agency tasks. So low agency tasks are simple in nature, uh, doesn't require complex environment, can be done in a supervised way, more static. While the high agency tasks are very adaptive, it requires complex goals, com complex environment. Now you can see the, the on the side of low agency, uh, the deterministic chatbots or LLM-based agents are doing a lot of wonders. Most of these kind of tasks can definitely be automated with agents coming into play. While the high agency tasks are still dependent on humans, right? And that's the current nature of it. And this gap, I hope, will always remain. But this gap is shrinking as as the day is progressing with the, the fast changing world of AI and, and Gen AI especially. Now, I mean, you, you would have seen what happened two days back with SpaceX. Uh, they, they achieved something which was unthinkable 10 years back. Every scientist in the world said it's not possible, but they were able to catch the, the, the rocket booster mid-air. So never say no, there's nothing which is impossible. So I would believe uh, in, in never saying no, uh, I don't want to say anything is impossible, but I, I, I'm a big proponent of human in the loop. There are always tasks which humans will do while AI will support them. Um, of course, the technology change will make things much cheaper, faster, and there are tasks which was not possible uh, beforehand uh, in terms of automation. They would be automated, but still there are humans in the loop which will do the job for us. So uh, with that picture, I hope uh, probably some of your doubts will get cleared. What's the, what's the way forward? I think it's very clear that with, with all the change happening, uh, there's no other way than embracing the change, right? There will be naysayers who will doubt whether it's feasible, not feasible, but every technology at the beginning will have its naysayers and and, and then uh, it, it gets adopted very, very quickly. And that's what we are seeing in the world of AI as well. Um, and, and hear it from the, the stalwarts at Nadella again, that if you don't jump on the new, you won't survive. And we don't want to be in this situation. And that's where I think the testing world has picked up very well in terms of adopting AI and bringing out very no innovative solution with all the advancement which is happening with Gen AI and Gen AI. So with that, I think pCloudy also has been at the forefront of uh, AI-driven software testing augmentation. And it's not something which we started just now. Uh, we have a full AI stack where, with a lot of AI-based solutions. And in fact, our first solution certifier, which was the exploratory bot, uh, be released almost five years back when there was no Gen AI itself. So we had built this exploratory bot, which can run tests across different uh, mobile devices on your app uh, without writing a single line of code. Uh, it, it has been used by many customers for monkey tests, exploratory tests, doing some sanity tests across different devices. Uh, then we released 
uh, other AI uh, uh, utilities or tools within the stack. And two being very prominent are QHeal, which is a self-healing engine for any uh, uh, open source based script like Appium, uh, Selenium, uh, uh, and other tools uh, which can be used here. And the second one is QLens, which is an independent visual testing uh, uh, utility, which can again be integrated with any of your open source uh, tools and frameworks that you are using. Uh, all this is also combined by our own Gen AI based bot, which we call it Elfi. Uh, so Elfi is, Elfi typically automates the tasks within the pCloudy platform. So rather than navigating through the UI, you can say Elfi that go and find a device for me, it will find it for you. Uh, so we have been uh, kind of using this whole AI stack for quite some time, and there are many other things in the pipeline. Uh, but today, uh, I want to uh, focus on announcing uh, the latest and uh, greatest that we have built uh, recently, uh, QPilot. And QPilot is our platform agnostic autonomous agent for all things testing. And uh, you will see that in action and... Uh, uh, you will see how it kind of uh, makes your life easier, uh, augments your testing. Um, so that's what we'll see it in action uh, in, in some time from now. But let's let's look at slightly more, uh, let, let's get slightly more deeper understanding of what QPilot is, both in terms of why we created, how it works, and what it does for you. So, in, in a simple uh, term, it's a agentic AI workflow to perform the tasks. And the task in the questions, the task in the uh, question here is about uh, testing tasks, testing tasks across different platforms, be it your mobile application, web application, and we'll be adding APIs. So it will be like end to end uh, autonomous testing agent for different kind of uh, uh, testing use cases that you might be having. Now, you might be thinking, how is it different from Gen AI based? I can go and ask, uh, let's say, ChatGPT to write a script for me. Um, but this is quite different because we are using an agentic AI approach. And just to kind of give you a differentiation of how Gen AI is different from agentic AI, of course, agent agentic AI is using Gen AI at the back end. But the biggest difference here is uh, the goal setting. So, agentic AI is goal oriented. We'll, you're giving a goal to the agent to go and perform. An agent then decides the, the workflow, the orchestration of different agents, and finally achieves the goal for you. While Gen AI uh, is more uh, either it can be a single shot prompt or a multi shot prompt, but you need to just ask a question and the Gen AI will respond. You don't know whether the, the goal is being met or not, right? That's the main difference between Gen AI and Agentic AI. And to kind of give you slightly more detail uh, of how this whole uh, QPilot workflow works. So you give a natural language input of your test case or test scenario, then it interprets and does the reasoning on its own by using different agents. Then it creates the workflow uh, of how the script have to be uh, script has to be created. And then it, it has the, ex once the workflow is created, it goes and execute the workflow and the final outcome is generated. And in between, there are a lot of feedback loops between uh, the workflow agents, execution agents, et cetera. Uh, so that's how any agentic AI framework works. And that's what we have used for QPilot as well. And again, a different view, very simplistic view, so that you get to understand what I'm talking about in the context of QPilot. So at a high level, there is a master agent, which is a planning and orchestration, orchestration agent. And then that agent opens up uh, uh, the workflow agents, which are uh, in this case, like Xflow locator generated generation agent, then the code generation agent. Uh, once the code is generated, it, it executes the step at the runtime. And then if there are any error, it analyzes and gives the feedback to the code generation agent. So it's all happening uh, in real time uh, where these agents are interacting with each other. And why this is much more important to understand is that our objective uh, has been to give you a functional script uh, of your scenarios that you write in natural language, right? Uh, there are many other, uh, I mean, wrappers and solutions that you might see where they will give you a script, but which can work, which might not work. 
Here, we take a bit of time through this whole agentic AI workflow to make sure that you get a fully functional uh, uh, script and you can even execute complex scenarios. Uh, and you will see that in action. So with that, I think uh, background, uh, it's important to understand that where does it fit for me, right? As a user, where does it fit for me? Um, what you see here is a typical life cycle of testing. So you have requirement gathering, you define your test objective, design, test environment setup, create your test case, create CI CD, pipeline, execute, and the cycle goes on, right? Um, I, I need not explain this. You all uh, have seen it uh, day in, day out. And this is where Qpilot, Qpilot rightly uh, fits in. So you can create the script for you. Uh, it can execute the scripts across different environment. And when, when I say environment, it could be different devices. It could be different browsers. Uh, it could be uh, API uh, execution. Uh, once the run, uh, once the execution is done, it can analyze the result for you. If there are some issues, it can take decision to fix. And uh, then it can also run large regression tools for you. And another uh, use case, which is not mentioned here, is synthetic monitoring. I mean, we are using Qpilot to run test 24 by 7 because it has the inbuilt self-healing engine as well. So it, it, it generates the script at the runtime with the runtime context of the application. And your script theoretically will never fail because it's taking generating the script at the runtime. Uh, so, so that's where uh, Qpilot fits in. There are other areas as well where it can help, though we have not started uh, delving into those areas, for example, test design, because I, I personally believe that test design has to be done by humans. Uh, there can be augmentation uh, within the test design process, but if the design is done well, I think rest of the process becomes very smooth. So, uh, Requirement gathering, test design are should be better done by humans, and the rest of the task AI can help. Right, that's the uh, hypothesis which we, with which we have created this um, uh, Q pilot. Now, uh, I hope I have given you enough context and and brief about what it is, why it exists, and where can it help. Uh, I am excited to see it live in action. Uh, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Shweb, who is the product specialist, have been working with Qpilot for uh, quite long from the time we conceived. We have, he has been showing demo to many customers, has been working with for POCs. So he's the right person to kind of take, walk you through. Uh, Shweb, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Savinash, for taking us through the journey of uh, the AI and also the product from the people standpoint, so where we are. So, yeah, so without much delay, so let me uh, please share my screen. Uh, I'm not sure if you can allow me to share my screen. Yeah. All right, yeah, let me share it. Right, uh, thank you so much again. Uh, just quickly uh, give a a quick overview on what P Cloudy is. So uh, P Cloudy is basically, uh, it's a cloud a unified app testing cloud platform, wherein it helps you test your different types of applications, be it on the mobile side, e even across the uh, web automation side. So we provide a, a comprehensive infrastructure in terms of providing the real physical devices, as well as the browser instance, where you can test your applications for your functional test. And plus you can uh, run your automation scripts by integrating with uh, different automation solutions. There is a seamless integration through APM, uh, Selenium, Expresso, XUI test, and so on. And top of it, we have a new, uh, you know, uh, the automation suit, which is more on the Qpilot side. So we will discuss more around it. Uh, so so this is a quick landing page uh, where we have arrived. So once I log into the uh, platform, so let me get into the devices section. So there are two uh, different businesses here. As I mentioned, uh, we help across, you know, test your applications on mobile as well as the browser instances where you can test your mobile web, web application as well across various different OSs, uh, OS combinations, different uh, browser for your cross-browser testing and so on. So let's get into the devices sections and uh, talk about more on the uh, devices piece. This is a huge uh, device infrastructure where we have uh, real physical devices hosted across different part of the world. 
and uh, so we support across various different uh, OS versions, all the leading uh, OS versions, so be it uh, any version that comes in the market. So we are the first to get the version and you know have it on our mobile devices so that you can test your applications across different OSs. Uh, so we do provide all the leading manufacturers that comes across all the uh, leading manufacturers that are available in the market uh, across Apple, Google, Samsung, and the latest models. We don't just support the smartphones, but also there's a support across all the uh, leading smartphones, tablets and phablets, uh, wherein you can test your applications with wide different screen sizes. Network, we also uh, support testing your application for interruption-based testing by providing a real SIM-based devices. So if there are any scenarios for the uh, interruption-based testing like SMS or the calling functionality, you may pretty much test it. And when it comes to uh, the data center locations, so we are hosted across different parts of the world. We have few data centers in India, one in US and also in Singapore, and we are uh, moving towards the, um, the Middle East and also following with the uh, Europe region. So that's something which is in our our roadmap, right? So that's about a device section. So now quickly, uh, let me uh, connect to any device. So for example, if I have any device in my mind, I can just quickly uh, connect to this device. Yeah, so once I uh, connect to the device, the complete access of the device is provided wherein I can, you know, test my applications in real time. I can do the functional testing of my application. I can, uh, if my application is in the production, I can get into the Play Store, App Store, download the app. Uh, start testing my application as well as so while you're testing, we do provide certain key uh, parameters in terms of, you know, the device log. So these uh, device logs helps you analyze if there are any specific issues at the application side or even any ANRs or the crash that happens while you test. So that's something which where uh, we will provide, which can help you analyze quickly on the issues. On the performance metrics side, uh, we do help you provide key performance parameters in terms of providing the performance metrics like the CPU, the memory consumption, and the battery consumption, which can help you analyze if there are any performance bottlenecks within your app. So that's something uh, as, a, as part of our platform, we do provide these features, which can certainly enhance your uh, your functional testing experience. And there are a lot many features. I, I will not deep dive into those. Uh, we can always have a separate call where we have some uh, readily available videos across all these different uh, features and functionalities, which you can uh, look forward. So now let's get into action, uh, talk about more about the uh, QPilot. So now let me get into the QPilot mode. All right, so QPilot is the first AI-based uh, automation uh, mobile uh, platform that Peakloudy has been launched. And we're the first in the market to support both mobile as well as web applications. So you can test your uh, different applications. It's a uh, pretty much technology agnostic. So we support all the different types of uh, applications, be it uh, React Native, be it Flutter-based applications, or any hybrid and native applications So pretty much support, and not just on the mobile, but also on the web web automation. So you may test your websites in real time uh, and, uh, you know, automate the entire process. So let's take it, uh, take a look at in live how you can test your application. So I have a sample uh, application that uh, I have uploaded my cloud drive. So it's one of our um, you know, e-commerce based applications where I can order certain products. I can provide the relevant app case and the app activity, which is something which you can get it from your app developers. Uh, let me define the name of it. And the, for the feature file, I have just provided sample test case where I can just provide the description in detail. So this description is something where you can capture it in simple English language. It's a natural language, right? So which you provide as an input to the uh, QPilot. So then QPilot takes into action. It will start understanding the description that you have provided and then it will try to execute. So let's see it in live. So I'll just go ahead and then save it. Maybe I'll just provide a quick uh, name to my test. Say for example, test case underscore one. Save it and then I'll go ahead and then generate the script. Right, so once I generate the script, now this is then you know wherein the AI, the Q palette comes into picture. It analyzes uh, the uh, the application and also reads the descriptions, whatever input that we have provided in simple English language. It reads it and then gets in, inside the uh, DOM structure of the application. It locates the element by using various different agents. So there are various different agents within the QPilot, as I mean, as mentioned in the in the slide. So it's we use we use the agentic AI approach. So which is intelligent enough understands the various different uh, the the interpretations and the reasoning around it, and it starts working. So while you are creating your automation script for the first time, so while you are generating, it takes a little bit of time. That's because at the backend it's getting inside your application 
understanding the DOM structure, validating each and every uh, description that you have provided with this within the script and it locates the expert and it does perform each and different action. So as you can see, uh, it has launched the application and then you can also see the real time, uh, real time, real time update about the action that is being performed. Right. So the first step has been completed where it went ahead and then clicked on allow option and now it's looking for the other option. So it will it will just go ahead and then perform all the uh, user actions that you have been provided. And uh, yeah, and further, I mean, once the of course, once the script gets generated, you can do lot many uh, customizations. So we will we will look into that once the script is generated. So we'll just go with the flow. Uh, let's let's wait for a few more uh, seconds. And once the execution gets completed, we are good to talk about it, right? So uh, so it can be implemented as I mean, as mentioned in earlier slides, right? So across uh, different, uh, you know, within a different part of the, within your testing cycle. So it can, it, it will start by creating your test cases across web and mobile. And, uh, you know, even you can analyze the uh, test executions. So once the execution gets over, you can deep dive into your execution. Once the execution gets over, you can so look at in, look into the results uh, how the uh, impact has done, what is the application, I mean, I mean, how, what, what are all the different errors? So it, it does all that bit while, you know, while the execution is happening. And uh, so once the execution gets over, we will also show you, uh, talk about the reports, how the report gets generated. We will deep dive into the report, so where it captures all the key metrics, which talks about your test logs, uh, the uh, the device logs, the APM session logs, along with the session video. So all that will be captured, which is part of analyzing your, test results right so yeah so we are almost there i mean we um, just few steps away once this gets completed we can uh, get into the execution mode and uh, see how we can execute this on uh, you know multiple language support all right so now i think we are pretty much there so uh, let me have a look at the steps where it is right now yeah just two more steps so once these steps are completed i think uh, we are good to get into the execution mode so it pretty much happens seamless. So as I mentioned, it's very much uh, technological agnostic, be it any applications or be it any complex scenarios. Uh, it's intelligent enough to get inside your application and based on the interpretations and the reasonings and based on the models that we have been used. So it it, it can help you, uh, you know, provide the scripts. So yeah, so the execution has been, the, the scripts generation has been completed successfully. Now I'll just let switch to the Kubelet dashboard. All right, so here is my dashboard. So, so he, here is uh, my suit, different, uh, uh, you know, the suits that I've already created. So I'll get into the one which I've created. So this is the one, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at it, right? So feature name, the app details are provided and the, also the description. And then if you get into in detail, the generated script. So as you can see, uh, the, code has been, the, the script has been generated uh, flawlessly. So without any much effort, even writing without a single line of code, I was able to just provide the description and capture the uh, the code, right? So, and we do support multi, uh, multi-language multi support. So as you can see, this is in the JavaScript, but we do also uh, support in multiple language like even Python. And we are going to add few more languages in our upcoming update. So 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 look forward for, you know, more uh, language support that, that keeps coming in our new updates. And uh, so, so the automation engineers or the QA engineers can deep dive, understand, uh, the code. If they want to copy this snippet, they can take it. They can take it. Their existing uh, IDEs. They can understand. They can just review the code. Uh, instead of writing the code, they can just uh, review the code which is generated by the Q Q pilot. And then you know maybe if they want to add certain logics, all that can be done. But it's been taken care by the Q pilot itself. And uh, yeah. So as I said, it's in the multi uh, language support. So now when the script is generated. You can go ahead and then execute it. So let me just go ahead and then execute. So I'll just trigger it. Now, so once I trigger, uh, you will be notified uh, that the execution has been began. And uh, yeah, I can get into the live session now. So the execution has been began. So my active session is the place where you can actually monitor your uh, live session, right? So this will help you. You can actually take a look at what really happening in the action, right? So so once I get the uh, I get the session, I'll be able to show it. Yeah, yeah. So it has connected. So this is my session. I can also get into the live action mode. All right, so now the device has been connected. So now let's sit back and relax and see how the execution takes place. I, I can just sit and uh, see the execution, how it has been performing. 
so yeah so the execution has been started so execution will be quite faster i mean only the script generation uh, time uh, time is little more because of the uh, the, uh, the 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 queue pilot and the various different uh, interpretations and reasoning that we bring in so the execution will be flawless. You can also execute on multiple devices at the same time. So for example, if you want to execute the same script on multiple devices, so you can execute on different devices. You can also choose the device on which you want to execute. And not just that, we can also integrate this with uh, uh, CI CD, for example, if you're looking to integrate with your existing CI CD. So that's something which we will be integrating it very soon in our uh, you know couple of releases. So we will have those updates very soon that's been added to our product. All right. So keep watch on, on our updates so so that will have more enhancements towards the uh, queue pilot so now the execution was uh, was successful and uh, yeah once the execution is completed you may get, get into the report so we do provide reports uh, comprehensive reports which will talk about uh, all the detailed metrics where, where we are capturing all the the test logs and so this is the place where you can get inside the metrics you can get into the uh, performance progressive report all right so just for the benefit of the time i have already uh, you know, shown one report so wherein you can get to see the details of your uh, build that you have just run. So it talks about the status of your execution, the, the duration it has taken and all the device details. And then followed by uh, all the key uh, parameters, which include logs, all the key capability, key parameters in terms of it captures all the test logs, uh, the device logs. So, so this is something, uh, it'll take some time, you know, while the device, while the execution has just happened and also the APM logs. So this will help you analyze if there are any specific issues or any specific errors. And you want to deep dive, understand what was the issue you, so you can get into it. Uh, app filing, so this is more on you know providing the key performance metrics in terms of the CPU, memory, and the battery. So right now, uh, this is something uh, which is there in our existing uh, functional testing platform. But on the queue pilot, this is something where we will we will go and update very soon. So this will be something where we will have an update in our upcoming uh, releases. And plus, we also have a, a session video. Session video will be uh, taking you through all the detailed action that you have been performed. Uh, the Q pilot has executed on the script. So that's something which you can have a look at it. You may further download in case uh, if you want to, you know, just download it on your on your machines. And these reports are, you know, pretty much shareable. So you may share the uh, report. Uh, so you can copy a share, share, you can create a link, quick uh, link that can be shared across different stakeholders, your, uh, you know, maybe different uh, personas across different organizations, even with your leadership team, just to have a quick look about the, uh, report. So that's pretty much on the mobile automation side. Maybe I will just quickly uh, switch to uh, automation on the web automation piece. So let me get into the mobile uh, web automation. Yeah. So this is more on the uh, mobile automation side, how you can generate the scripts using QPilot. And now let's take a look at how you can generate your web automations in real time. So uh, let me uh, take you through the uh, Web automation. So I'll we will connect to one specific machine now. I let me take a Mac machine here. I can just connect to any, any browser machine. So like physical uh, real mobile devices, we do support uh, you know for the web automations or even for the web testing scenarios. So where you can run through all your uh, websites, you can test your applications. In case if it's a manual test, you can just log in, uh, launch your application, and then perform tests across various different uh, scenarios that you wanted to test. You you may also sit with different resolutions in case of something where you want to see the behavior of your applications in real time. Yeah, you may capture screenshots while you're testing. So these are some of the capabilities from the manual testing standpoint that we already have. So now let's get into the queue pilot mode. So this is something which is a era for interest. Yeah, I can just go ahead and then provide my uh, details. Again, I have a feature file already created. Yeah, I can just publish this just for the benefit of the time. And of course, the URL. Yeah, that's so a URL. I say it as web automation right and now let me go ahead and then save it yeah maybe I just i can you can even create a suit in case if i am i want to create it and then provide some meaningful name to my test case right one and then go ahead and then generate so once i generate the scripts again now qpilot will come into action right so 
uh, yeah, it's just launch the application uh, and then it will go ahead and then perform all the different actions that you have been written in the form of a natural language. So again, the, the approach behind the scenes is pretty much the same that we have seen for the mobile. Uh, we just wanted to show even how it works for web automation. So now you may execute it across multiple platform as well. You may you might have created the automation script on one platform. Say for in this case, it's a Mac machine. Now, if I would like to execute the same script on the uh, mobile automation, on the uh, Windows operating system, I can do that as well. So you don't have to change anything as such. Just select the required uh, OS and the browser that you want to execute and you can execute. And plus additionally, you also have an option of, uh, you know, integrating with all the different uh, the CI servers in case if you are triggering your build and you have your CI servers in place. So that's something uh, which you can integrate and you know test. So without any effort, again, uh, just imagine if I have to write a piece of a code. So there are a lot of dependencies. Again, there's a dependency on right skill source, uh, right resources where a user has to understand the language and also writing, creating the scripts. It's a time consuming effort. Right. So all these are, I mean, something which can be, uh, which can be, which we can overcome and uh, just create the scripts. Even a non-technical user, this is not just focused mostly for the technical user. Even a non-technical user can provide the steps in simple English, natural level language, and then execute it. So the execution happens, which you can see it on the screen. So it will perform all the actions that you have generated and it will take you through each, each of the different steps, right? It performs. So based on the uh, the uh, the agentic AI approach. So it will just go ahead, locate the um, objects, gets inside the DOM structure, uh, gets the XPath the relevant text part, and then you know identifies and it validates all that can be done. And uh, further moving on, we will also uh, help you. Uh, you know, you know uh, the you know, from the um, customization standpoint, you may wish to add certain uh, assertions or validations. So all this can be done. So that's so that's something which we will be releasing in our upcoming releases. So watch out for the updates again. Yeah. So it's just getting completed. So we'll wait for this to get over, and then once this is there, I'll just quickly show you how you can execute it on the uh, you know real browser machines right of course as i mentioned so we will also have a scheduler in place so example for example if you want to schedule it for a specific date and time or or a specific uh, on a specific windows machine or a mac machine with specific browser so you can uh, so we can always do that as well so we want your uh, support as well. I mean, in this, so you can test all your complex scenarios. It's not just focused on one specific uh, technology, as I mentioned, it's a technology agnostic, so you can uh, test. So uh, we are open to support you in this journey. And uh, so look forward for all your uh, participations and you know go through the trial uh, of our, uh, on the QPilot side, execute you with your scenarios and uh, we, we can work with you and then help you out in this journey. All right, I think we are pretty much there. So let me just check where we are. Yeah, I think it's the last step, one step that is pending. So it'll just add to cart and then, well, yeah, I think we are good. So, so yeah, I think it's completed. So as you can see, the execution, the script generation is pretty much done. So once this is done, we'll be notified with a pop-up where you can just uh, get into the Qpilot dashboard. So let's get into the Qpilot dashboard. Yeah, so there's a web automation. Yeah, so here's my script. All right, so it's generated. Yeah, so the script again, uh, you can just run through the script. You can have deep dive. Uh, again, we have support for multi uh, language, even for the web automation. It's not limited to any specific language. We are going to add a few more languages in our upcoming uh, weeks. All right, so yeah, I can just quickly have a review of my script. Yeah, if everything is well, or if I have to copy the code, I can just copy it and then execute it. So let's go ahead and then execute. Yeah, I can just go ahead and execute either on Windows and Mac, as I mentioned earlier. So let me execute on a Mac. Right, execution has been triggered. Let me get into the live section. Yeah, we'll wait for the uh, agent to pick up the machine. So once that's picked up, you will be able to see a, yeah, I think it's picked, a Mac machine on the Ventura OS version. Yeah, so this will be seamless. So, so the execution can be done. I mean, you can you may execute it on uh, multiple uh, machines, multiple browser versions, OS different OS versions. So it it will be 
uh, pretty much seamless. And also very important thing I'm going to talk about uh, during his presentation is on the uh, maintenance part of your test of your test scripts, right? So we often struggle to, uh, uh, you know, manage, maintain the scripts. What happens when there is a new build? Right? So that's something, uh, you know, where the, the, the QA engineers try to put more effort, understand the change and then create the script. So there's a lot of time again being spent. So with QPilot, QPilot comes with its inbuilt self-healing approach, which automatically, uh, you know, does your uh, all your, uh, you know, maintenance part. So it will it will just quickly regenerate the scripts, and then you will be able to exist. So there's no uh, there's it's a hassle-free from the maintenance standpoint. You don't have to worry about the the changes which comes in at the object property level. So it's this something which which has been taken care, and. Uh, yeah so now yeah, as you can see the execution pretty much just happened i mean over the uh, over the fly i mean we didn't see uh, any uh, any challenge at all so i was able to execute so likewise i can execute it even on the uh, windows machines or in any other machine that i want to look i want to execute of course uh, ci cd even through ci cd so with that i think uh, i'm pretty much done with my uh, demonstration maybe i'll just quickly uh, summarize uh, what have been done so far. So let me just bring out the slides. Just to give a quick uh, summarize about the QPilot. So this is an, you know, where you can uh, automate all your mobile apps or even your web applications, the websites autonomously, you wherein you don't have to worry about uh, taking, you know, or calculated effort. It works on its own. It it has an intel. It's intelligent enough that to uh, to automate all your the all the complex scenarios. So you can uh, test all your uh, you know mobile apps, web apps. The API execution can be done. And we also spoke about the self healing approach, which is very important, right? So more from the maintenance standpoint. So it's an inbuilt self healing, which takes care of all the maintenance effort. You don't have to worry about the changes in on your new build. So that's something which has been taken care. And also, you know. Uh, going forward, we also have a lot of test orchestration. You know that will be for wider test coverage across browsers and devices. So it uh, it is an intelligent enough to distribute your test. So you maybe you might have certain scenarios where you want to uh, distribute your test across uh, different devices or different browsers at the same time, and thereby optimizing the uh, test cycle here. So that's something where you can uh, integrate. And of course, as I mentioned, CI CD you you may integrate with all your existing CI servers that you've been using. So that's something which you can do it. And of course, not but the least, so you can copy the script. So if you're an automation expert, you can just create the generate the script, copy the code, and then review it. You can set it up in various different languages uh, based on your existing frameworks and then work on it. All right, so that's a quick uh, summary about uh, QPilot. And so we look forward for your active participation. So if you want to try uh, QPilot, uh, you can quickly scan your uh, QR code from your uh, mobile site, from the mobile. So this will give you access or, you know, maybe you can quickly register to the QPilot here. So wherein we can help you provide the instance to you so that you can test all your complex scenarios, all your different mobile and web automations. So uh, we look forward for all your uh, participation. So with that, I think uh, quick time check. I think we are pretty much there. So we, I'll open up for uh, the uh, Q and A. Uh, maybe Avinash, if you want to throw some some light on the uh, on the demonstration or anything on the Q pilot, yeah, please you can go ahead. So uh, there are a few questions already uh, in the Q and A section. Uh, the first is around: uh, Can I use the scripts generated within my automation framework? Um, so I think Shri had just answered that question uh, in the summary part and also while he was generating the script. Uh, that's one of the hypotheses that we have is uh, it can augment the test creation for even uh, uh, test developers so they can write the scenarios, uh, generate the script and copy it uh, within their frameworks. Uh, however, uh, for any other uh, person who is just not interested in the script part, they can ignore that piece and just create their natural language scenarios and let QPilot do everything. So that's an additional step, which is there. Uh, if you want to copy, you can copy and uh, use it within the framework. Thanks, Avinash, for taking that question. Maybe I'll just quickly take another question. So we have uh, another question. Uh, can we work with uh, Flutter-based applications? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, uh, QPilot is a 
technology agnostic, be it any application, not just Flutter, but even the React Native applications uh, on your, uh, even the native and the web, uh, the hybrid applications. So we can pretty much automate. So bring it on. I mean, test with your, uh, test with uh, with the uh, trail instance that that does something which we can provide and you know you can have a seamless experience. So yeah, so to answer to your question, yes, we do support the Flutter-based applications. Oh, well, there are many questions that are coming up. I'll just maybe just try to take the other questions as well. So how to provide uh, test data in the uh, QPilot mode? Very interesting interesting question again. So uh, so when it comes to test data, right? So one is, one is we provide the test data while we are providing the, uh, you know, the des description, uh, right? So you can provide all your test data. So going forward, so we will also help you parameterize with different set of uh, data, wherein you have option, uh, wherein uh, once the code is generated, you can go ahead and then provide the uh, test data. So you can map it. So for example, if you have your data within your Excel and you want to pull the data out of it, so that's something which you can do it, right? So that's something which you can pull the data directly from your Excel sheet and then you know run through multiple set of data. So test data is something which is crucial part of automation, not just execute with the hard coded values, but also execute with multiple set of data. So that's a core feature. I mean, that's something which is expected from any automation platform. So to answer to your question, yes, uh, we uh, you know we we can support uh, test data in the in the QPilot. Hope that answers your question. All right. So I have another question. Uh, is it only based on PDD framework? I mean, so I it's pretty much good. yeah. Maybe I'm not sure if you can. I can take that question. Um, Shivani, no, uh, what you saw uh, was a uh, totally natural language uh, way of writing the test. However, we are not restricting the user. So you can also uh, write your test in a completely BDD kind of environment. So if you already have your BDD uh, uh, format test scenarios like given, then you can pass that directly. In fact, we, we are just uh, working on linking that with the test management tool so that you don't have to manually copy paste your scenarios in QPilot. It will just directly fetch it from uh, some of your uh, BDD tools or test management tools. But to, to answer it specifically, no, it's not limited to BDD. You can write it in any natural language. In fact, it's expected to even understand the steps, even if you don't provide detailed ones, but we don't recommend it because then there are chances of errors. So you can all just say that, okay, can you uh, test my uh, flight journey within my website, right? Uh, it's, it, it is intelligent enough to understand, but there are chances of error. That's why we expect users to give at least the right steps in a, in a natural language. Um, hope that answers your question. Uh, another question is, um, although asserts are yet to be introduced, can we enhance script manually and achieve it? Absolutely. That's the reason we have given the script. You can go and edit the script uh, the way uh, you want. You can add logic, you can add assertions, uh, but very soon we'll be adding the assertions uh, uh, itself within within a week or so that, that releases plan. Um, and a link question is uh, from Likit is how are dynamic locators handled after failure? Um, so like I, I uh, kind of gave a hint in my diagram of the uh, agent-based architecture. Uh, so we have a error failure analysis agent, which is uh, continuously doing that. Every step execution, it checks whether there is a failure. If, if there is a failure, what could be the reason? It does retrial. So it has the inbuilt uh, self filling mechanism, right? Uh, and uh, so in that sense, you should not worry about um, running tests across, across different environments. And one of the beauty of it is, and we have already seen the result um, at many places, is let's say if you have two different instances of your application where there are some UI changes. For example, in pCloud itself, we have two instances, one, for public uh, users, which we call it public cloud. Then there is another instance, which is a private cloud. Though most of the platform features remain same, there are some workflow related changes. There are login screen changes, um, uh, the landing page changes. 
in with qpilot you can just write one script for these two because it's generating the script at the runtime uh, for the login of whether it's a private instance or a public instance so it can it can handle both the scenarios uh, so it's minimizing all those challenges that we face across uh, different environments uh, uh, workflow changes etc uh, there is another question from amit how is the accuracy suppose there are multiple objects with the same text level how would you make it sure that it's working on the internet that's the that's the core ip of it <laughs> we have built a lot of intelligence to make sure that it identifies uh, even uh, uh, in a very complex uh, kind of scenario. So you see the uh, the execution that we did was for Misho, we, we have tested it across Flipkart, Amazons, uh, we have tested it across Make My Trip. So uh, we have handled complex scenarios. However, uh, we would definitely love to try out more scenarios and uh, we, we are con continuously training models on new scenarios that we, we are encountering. Um, so I'm not, we can't claim hundred percent accuracy, uh, but it's much better than what we have seen, uh, anywhere else. So I really hope that you try and, uh, uh, give us feedback. And if your scenario doesn't work, there is a feedback, uh, uh, uh button. You can just post it, uh, we'll reach out and, and try to see where it fails and we'll, uh, make sure that the model learns from that failure. Um, uh, sure, if you want to take uh, questions from yeah. Anika. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, how can we uh, how can we do send keys equivalent scripts through Qpilot? Uh, I think uh, uh, this question is more from the uh, from the uh, the uh, the the main uh, the various different uh, uh, keys that we use. Uh, you know, to uh, send across while you are uh, testing our applications, it's more of uh, you know providing the description and then uh, and the QPilot based on the uh, the algorithms that we bring in the uh, the LLM models that has been prepared. Uh, so it's intelligent enough to understand all the key actions uh, that you provide. So you can provide the keys in the form of a natural language again. Um, so I'm just trying to uh, visualize. I mean, what type of send keys it can be, right? uh maybe you know if you can brief a little bit more around the uh, what ex uh, what exactly that you're looking for or, or may, we may reach out to you separately uh, to understand your uh, use case more in detail and uh, so that we can provide you the uh, you know the best possible uh, answer to your question right so that you know you can also try it out on uh, on the qpilot standpoint but yeah we can handle the qpilot is intelligent enough to handle all the various different uh, uh, combinations of tasks whatever that you provide it's the, it's all about how descriptive you provide right so yeah hope that answers your question yeah if there is any follow up question i mean i, I will help you answer very interesting question from Surendra Nath. Can I import back the edited updated scripts and would QPilot be able to update the test cases from the updated scripts? <laughs> Very interesting uh, use case, Surendra. And I think uh, uh, it, it kind of throws interesting ideas, uh, though we, we have not kind of tested it yet. Uh, theoretically, it should be possible. Uh, we'll try and see. Uh, but if it, even if it doesn't work, I think it should be pos possible for us to kind of bring that feature if that's a need. Uh, if I'll put it that way. Yeah, thanks, Aminash. And, and there is a follow-up question with my Anit. I mean, I, I think this is uh, trying to elaborate more on the send keys action. So like simple name and the password entry, of course, I mean, that can be done. I, I don't see there is a challenge. Yeah, sure. But I'll just maybe add to it. I think uh, I understand uh, this scenario here. Uh, so Anita, that is where I think uh, the the uh, agents are intelligent enough. So for example, let's say it tries with uh, enter command and it doesn't work because it's executing into the live mode. And if it's a failure, it will analyze the failure. If it is, it is because of, let's say, the object could not be found or it is because the action could not be performed. It will retry with another kind of uh, uh, action. It could be send key, so it has this intelligence built. So we uh, we hope that it's, it works. 
we haven't specifically tried uh, a send key scenario, but the way it has been designed, it should work. We can try the scenario and, and let it let you know. And in case if it doesn't work, we can just train the model and, and it will start kind of taking it up. Uh, yeah. Question from Amit, can it work on organizations internal application which are not accessible over the internet? Um, yes, it, it would, uh, but we'll require some whitelisting to be done. We have a private instance of the QPilot which can work with internal applications, uh, but there, there has to be some whitelisting where, where our private instance can access your internal application, right? And that is how uh, even our normal customers, I mean, our regular customers test their application on our private clouds, right? Uh, either using VPNs or uh, using the whitelisting approach. So if that is done, I think it would work. Um, one, one more question from Amit. Is it possible to give the current automation framework as a context so that the script generation generation takes into consideration the existing page objects and variables. Uh, that's a that's the next level of enhancements that we have been kind of working on. We have got this ask from the customers uh, where they want to kind of use their existing framework as a context. Uh, in fact, there has been asked where can we kind of modify those legacy frameworks uh, into the into, into more latest uh, approaches. So these are certain new asks that we have got. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that very soon you'll see some uh, uh, release and update around it. Uh, but that's, that's a very interesting uh, thought. And we have, uh, we've got similar kind of ask from some of the other customers as well. So thanks Amit for sharing this. It validates the kind of ask uh, and, and gives more confidence that this is kind of use case we should also work on. Interesting. So I think we have uh, kind of reached uh, a time limit here. Uh, if there are more questions, we'll be more than happy to answer. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining and asking so many questions. What we need is uh, you go ahead and try uh, try as complex scenarios as you can and feel free to share. Um, we can't, we don't claim that everything will work for the first time, but we definitely want to work with you and support uh, to make sure that uh, we achieve the result together. Right. So we are all excited to work with you uh, during your trial, during your uh, proof of concept. So feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to help. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you so much, Avinash. Thank you, Shoaib, for sharing that insight. And uh, yes, please do try qpilot.ai. Uh, you've got the Q, uh, QR code. And do reach out to us. If you just go on our website, click on the chat box, uh, you can just reach out to one of us and we'll be happy to revert. Or you can write to us at info at See you, good day, and good night.